started. Okay, we have a few new people on the Zoom call today. We start off with questions that you submitted. Um, with our Wednesday Zoom calls, we do allow live questions too. 99% of the time people chat in those questions. So feel free to chat in a question anytime it pops in your head. I won't actually answer that question most of the time until we get to the end of the ones that were sent in. Okay, let's get started. Um, on the home page of your member site, remember I'm updating that usually multiple times a week. Um, we have a direct link for the Zoom calls. Now you don't have to register. If you do register, then you'll get reminders for the Zoom call, um, but uh, you can just click the direct link just to make it easier to jump on the Zoom calls now. Uh, cheek swab testing, we already, everybody knows about that. Just make sure you please fill out the cheek swab form. You could do an online form now, just so I know what to be seen for specifically. You know, there's, you know, I want, to be as specific to what your desires are. So if you're like, you know, I'm having heart palpitations too, could you check for that? Um, you know, put that on the, the, the form. Um, so the more detail you can be on the request form, the better, and the more specific I can be in the testing. So um, try to do that. And, you know, you can print it out and send it with your cheek swab. That's just fine, or you can um, uh, fill it out online, whichever is easier for you um, to do, um, just uh, if I could get that. And then you can pay for the swab test right on the um, member site too. I just ask that you do that. Um, that would just save us some um, man hours, women hours, people hours here if you do that. Oh, a reminder that everybody is, uh, uh, all of you can jump on any of the courses, use your same username and ID, uh, username and uh, password that you did to create the you know, for your member site. And the blog is accessible only to our members. So make sure you just, you know, click that little eyeglass thing, spyglass thing, and you could type in a question. There's 900 blog pages and growing. So a lot of your questions might be answered on the blog. So uh, so when you think of something you're trying to search for, you could search for it on using that little search tool. It might be on the member site pages somewhere. It might be a blog post somewhere. So try to search for it. That'll save you some time. Okay, ready for your questions. I just had a CT scan and a couple of questions. Mediastinum, chest wall, hyalur area. Uh, right breast mass seen on prior exam measured this. On today's exam measured this. So it's um, changed, uh, or on today's exam measured this on prior exam. So it's shrunk almost in half, you know, so that's very good. And then they give an impression. So <clears throat> whenever you look at a, CT, MRI, X-ray um, exam, they might go into details for the doctor and then down at the bottom, usually there'll be an impression section, which is a summary. So here's the summary. Number one, decreased right breast mast, right axillary, axillary is your armpit, adenopathy, um, that's an enlargement and right anterior chest wall nodule. This is consistent with response to therapy. <clears throat> so they're just making the radiologist is making a comment that it's decreasing because this person is doing some sort of therapy. Right lower lobe nodule, uh, slightly decreased in size from prior exam. Multiple new enlarging sclerotic densities, and that's what the question is about. In the skeletal area, likely representative healing metastatic disease. What's a sclerotic density? So a sclerotic density is in, uh, um, so when bone heals, so if you have a fracture, so if you fractured your arm, let's say, 
and then uh, you took an x-ray right afterwards, you'd see the break. But then you took an x-ray three weeks later, you'd see a sclerotic density. Sclerosis, sclerotic, is a term used for bone, an increase in density, an increase lay down of bone. Um, now, it can be from a fracture. That's healing. Now, eventually, um, usually there won't be a sclerotic density, maybe six months post-fracture healing, because your body balanced that out. So you wouldn't see an extra density there. But as it's healing, you're going to have an increase in bone density there. That's called sclerosis. So if there is was metastatic disease, meaning uh, cancer that had uh, metastasized to a bone, remember I said, when cancer metastasizes to the bone, it's 99% of the time, it's a lytic lesion. So lytic lesion is completely different than sclerotic lesion. Lesion just means what we see there. So something going on. So a lytic lesion is a bone eating away. It's, it's, it's loss of bone density. The sclerotic lesion is an increase in density. So when uh, a cancer is healing, so let's say there was a lytic lesion, metastasis to the bone, and it's and that cancer is dying, now your body's going to heal that lesion with an increase in bone density. So when you see sclerotic density, sclerotic lesions, sclerotic sites on the bone with a person that has, has had a history of metastasis, that's always a good thing. So sclerosis on the bone is a good thing if it's healing density. Now you could get sclerosis in a joint. Uh, that's not a good thing. That would be like in an arthritis situation. So if I have bony arthritis, let's say uh, a um, uh, from use arthritis or what's called a degenerative arthritis, also known as an osteoarthritis, I will have a sclerosis of the joint. That's not good. So you got an increased lay down of of bony material in the joint. Joints are supposed to be enlarged and and movable. When you have an increase in calcium laid down in the joint, it's less movable. Um, if you have more of a bone on bone type situation. So, but when you see it in a bone post metastasis, that's a good thing. When they measure a tumor on scans, can they tell if there is cancer under the tumor, or is it just a shell? No, they typically can't unless the tumor is calcified, which typically it doesn't calcify. Um, there's some lung tumors that will actually calcify, um, but most of the time in a breast or something like that, it won't calcify. So, you know, it's hard to say. You could have a pseudo enlargement. We've spoken about that dozens of times. When you look at a CT scan or an MRI, you know, it's gold standard, but it's far from gold standard, truthfully, because you can get a pseudo enlargement. It looks like an enlargement, but it's actually an immune attack to the cancer. And you can't really tell what you're measuring. The tumor markers are also decreasing. So that's great. Um, very excited about the results. Thank you for your team. Thank you for all you've done. So, um, you are very welcome. Just give all the credit to God. He's healing you and he's using all sorts of ways to do that. We just are so thankful for that. This is why you look at multiple uh, markers. So you don't just look at an x-ray. You don't just look at a CT scan. You don't just look at a PET scan or an MRI or a blood test. The more ways you can look at it, including looking at subjective findings, you're going to have a better analysis of progress of disease. Next question. We got an email from True Rife about a deal setting in your model F117. Correct. So this month, if you send in, if you have enough for F117. So they came out with the F122 about three years ago or so. So most everybody on here, I think, has an F-122. If you do have an F-117, um, you can upgrade this to an F-122 for $1,500 during February. 
So just call True Right, you can upgrade it. What's the advantages of upgrading? Um, so I have a number of F-117s at my office for use in my office, my kids, my, um, whenever I have an F-117 and F-122 at home, I'm upgrading it to an F-122, simply because I do think that there may be a time where the F-117 might not be supported. They might not support three pairs on it. So I think if you do have an F-117, now is a perfect time to upgrade it for $1,500. You just send it in to True Rife. They turn around and send you a brand new F-122 for $1,500 plus $35 shipping. And um, I think that's just a steal of a deal right now. They're just, I, I don't know, they're, it's a great deal. So I would suggest you do it. Uh, I have been gaining weight so bad. It doesn't stop. So when you have weight gain, usually cancer patients don't have weight gain. This person is uh, doing real well, probably in remission. And um, But what you do want to look at with weight gain is a number of things. So um, again, I'm not a weight loss specialist. So, but definitely look and get your thyroid readings back, full thyroid panel. Um, we talked about what that the definition of that is. Um, and uh, this person's talking about everything that they're doing and you know and they and they're still gaining weight. So it's just how is this possible? It's very, very difficult. Um, one of the things with increased weight gain with everything you're doing, you want to look at um, possible food sensitivities. So and, the reason why is that if you have food sensitivities, hidden food sensitivities, um, and you're eating those food, you're causing this inflammation, even though you're doing eating really good food. So the way you have to get that done is you have to do a Cyrex um, array. Um, it's called their array 10. Um, that's what you would really want to do with a case like this. Iodine, do you recommend taking Lugol's liquid orally or topically? What if you do not have cancer diagnosis? What about the caplets? Um, first of all, I'm not a real big fan of Lugol's brand. Um, it's just, um, it's, uh, I like the, the iodine that is more kelp based. Iodide. Now, most iodide does have potassium iodide in it as well. Most iodide supplements, um, but some have some kelp-based nutrients in it as well. Um, that being said, should you take it orally or topically? You will absorb some liquid iodine topically. So you can do iodine topically. You could, if you have breast cancer, you could put topical iodine right over your, over the tumor site, you, you know, close to the tumor site. There can be benefit to that. Um, but um, oral iodide is beneficial as well. We have our, um, I think it's called clear selenium plus iodine product. Uh, that's the one I recommend to most people. Uh, Biotics Research has a liquid iodine. I think it's called iodine forte, uh, liquid iodine forte, I think what is what it's called. That's a good product too. Um, uh, but the clear selenium plus iodine is my favorite one. That's a capsule. What's the benefit of iodine? So the benefit of iodine is you need iodine to make T3 and T4 in your thyroid. Iodine uh, also can be beneficial with hormone-driven cancers. Um, so breast cancer can be a factor in the need for iodine. Also, iodine can be protective of your thyroid in the case of you're taking radiation or you're exposed to radiation. That would be another reason to take iodine. So those would be the reasons to take iodine. 
But we've got to remember iodine is uh, um, it's a mineral, but um, you can overtake, you can take too much of it. So I would just use what's, um, what is suggested on the bottom of this as a safe dosage. How would a biomat be incorporated in my protocol? So a biomat is a infrared heat source. So that's really what a biomat is. Uh, they may make all sorts of other claims. Um, I'm not against biomats. I think they're nice, great heat sources, but I don't believe in a lot of the other claims that they make um, uh, selling their products. That's just my opinion. Um, but I not against biomats. So they're good uh, infrared heat sources. We have other infrared heat packs um, on our store. A biomat is typically a large one that you lay on. You can use that. There's no harm in doing that. There's no harm in using. You could use that in your protocol. You could use that on your bed. That's totally acceptable. Can or should I drink raw milk? Um, no. Um, now, is raw milk better for a person than pasteurized milk? Well, sure it is. Pasteurized kills any of the, you know, positive, good enzymes in it. Of course, raw milk, you got to make sure that you're getting it from a good, clean source. So you should try to inspect the farm. <laughs> you know, we used to help friends of ours milk their cows, and we used to get raw milk from them. This was years ago, but they had a real clean bar. <laughs> Kept it, excuse me, you have to please mute yourself. Kept it very clean. Um, and there was, you know, so we trusted the source of, you know, that milk. But we also, we had known other people that we saw their barn. It was disgusting. It was just horrible. And there's no way I drink raw milk out of those other people's barn. So you do want to look at that. Secondly, why should you be drinking raw milk? Should you be drinking raw milk with a cancer diagnosis? Typically, no. Um, milk has other growth factors in it that could, um, you know, increase the growth of cancer. So the answer is no. Should you be drink eating raw cheese? No, you should typically not be eating raw cheese with the, as a cancer diagnosis. No. I know that on a lot of you, I have recommended no dairy. So does no dairy mean absolutely positively not one speck of dairy? Hey, I've said this you know, a thousand times, maybe not a hundred times for sure. That's not even exaggerating. That your diet is your diet. It's not a religion. It's not something that you have to, you know, steal all the joy from your life to keep it. Certainly eating butter is a whole lot better than for you than a lot of the plant-based spreads and stuff. So if you're not consuming a ton of butter every day, you could certainly continue to use butter um, uh, in uh, an appropriate fashion instead of the plant-based based spreads out there. There's just a lot of things that aren't good for you in, in the bad oils. Certainly using olive oil, certainly using um, coconut oil. Those are good oils to use. Um, but I really don't see any real benefit for any cancer patient drinking milk of any kind, whether it's raw or pasteurized. Chiropractor who has been helping me with supplements wants me to do a NutraClear 15 uh, metabolic cleanse from biotics research. Um, I would say no. Uh, we have this product at our store. A lot of people buy it, but not our cancer patients. Um, this is not something you need to do. You're doing a cleanse with everything that you're doing, you are cleansing. Um, I would suggest that you spend a little time, log on to the seven phases of detox uh, course and understand detoxification. Detoxification isn't doing a 15 day cleanse. Um, detoxification is a daily process that never ends and you're supporting it with everything that I have you on. You don't need to do a cleanse like this. Now, understand, I'm not against this. I'm not against somebody doing these. It's not something you need to do. Uh, concerned about consuming so many capsules, even though they're vegetable cellulose, there are some good ingredients. 
is it okay to open up the capsules and mix it with water, uh, make a paste and wash it down with water, uh, or you could put it in your smoothie. The only one you can't is you got to look at your model and make sure it's not a time-released product. If it's a time-released product, then no, you shouldn't open them up. But if it's not a time-release product, you could open up them and put them in your smoothie. Sure, absolutely. You don't need all those capsule products and, and you know and ingredients in your diet. Absolutely. Um, are there things that you shouldn't take at the same time? Um, no, not. I don't have anybody on things that really you shouldn't take at the same time. The only thing that you got to be careful taking at the same time is taking a homeopath. You should really take homeopath on an empty stomach. Uh, if you're taking Essiac, it's better to take that, sip that for 15 to 30 minutes on an empty stomach. If you're taking Protocell, then you're taking that away from all your other supplements. Um, but that's about it as far as what I have everybody on. Uh, rectal cancer, second colo, uh, colonoscopy showed seven polyps uh, that uh, were removed during the colonoscopy. I suspect the colon in the tumor had increased in size. I am, however, feeling better with more energy. There were no tests done to check my on metastasis. I am scheduled for an annual physical. What tests should I ask? So the tests to check for metastasis. Um, uh, the best test would be a PET scan. So I don't know why they didn't recommend that. Many times I understand um, they don't recommend a scan because the insurance doesn't pay for it or some silly thing like that. Um, so that's what I would ask for is a PET scan. Okay, this person has stage four prostate cancer. Uh, please describe or paraphrase terms on uh, your comments on blocking testosterone and IL-6. Okay, many oncologists that treat prostate cancer patients insist on using androgen deprivation therapy. So that's what blocks testosterone. Androgens are male hormones. Think of it that way. The testosterone, testosterone is an androgen. So um, the theory is that testosterone increases the growth of prostate cancer. It's based on the androgen receptor on cancer cells. It's highly affinitive to, to binding dihydrotestosterone. It can block this receptor. The general positive response many cancer patients have after beginning this, uh, it looks like you just copied and pasted this from their website or something. Uh, there's research that shows that specific androgen uh, receptor, AR3, is activated by testosterone, stimulating normal prostate growth. In prostate cancer, it is thought that testosterone over affects this receptor in a sense. However, so, or somehow the receptors become hyper reacted to testosterone causing excess growth. This is called AR3 overexpression. It is thought that certain genes have become overexpressed. So, okay, so uh, it is, okay, so this is uh, using Lupron or another uh, energy deprivation therapy can dramatically reduce this is actually looks like it's from my blog or from my book. Reduce PSA levels and even greatly slow cat cancer, uh, a slow growth for a period of time. Then the cancer tends to reappear with a vengeance. How can we address this? Okay, so that is a very true statement. Matter of fact, any honest oncologist will say that will that talk to a person with prostate cancer and push them towards androgen deprivation therapy will say that it typically only works for about one to three years and then the cancer can come back with a vengeance. So how could we address this? Well, it has been shown this that elevated interleukin-6, IL-6, 
is a major mediator of this inflammatory response. So interleukin-6, so this gets back to your question. Interleukin-6 is a what's called a cytokine. So there are certain chemicals that are made that are signaling chemicals in the, in the immune response. And these are different interleukins. Interleukin number six is a hyperinflammatory um, cell mediator chemical. So um, if we can reduce interleukin six, it can really help in many cases. It serves a purpose, but it can be overly, uh, it can be an over response and an inflammatory response. So um, decreasing interleukin six any way that we can can be helpful. Um, so what are some things that can decrease interleukin-6? Well, I think in my blog, which I really should update it, because at the time I wrote the, my blog, it was in all the literature, it was really the only thing that really reduces interleukin-6 is EGCG, which is um, uh, the active ingredient of green tea extract. So green tea extract uh, uh, has a catechin called EGCG that has been shown in dozens and dozens of studies to decrease interleukin-6 levels. Well, now there's been new studies that come out that resveratrol, and even curcumin to some point, but resveratrol and EGCG from green tea extract are the two main components that can reduce interleukin-6. So this is true, and I've talked to you about this, that interleukin-6 is, is one of those inflammatory cytokines in brain inflammation, in early dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, uh, et cetera. So it's a uh, flavonoid that can be very beneficial for us. Also with, with uh, uh, prostate cancer patients, it's been shown that andrographis has been greatly beneficial to help if, with, with um, people that are doing androgen deprivation therapy to prolong the effects the positive effects of androgen deprivation therapy. Now, I will say there's new studies out on androgen deprivation therapy that are not positive. They're not positive that it actually, you know, prolongs the life of the patient. And, you know, it might, it, it's almost given that if you do androgen deprivation therapy, your, pro, your PSA is going to drop dramatically. You could have a PSA of over a thousand, start, start Lupron, and your PSA can drop to zero. It's dramatic, but there's some studies out that, sh that don't show that it actually decreases the progression of the disease. Just because it artificially drops your PSA doesn't mean it actually is solving the problem. PSA is just a marker. I've heard from a couple of different sources now the benefit of a 21 day water fast um, for treating cancer. In one case, I heard a tumor shrinking by 50% within the 21 days. That was a colorectal tumor, which is similar to what I have. I have also heard of lower back pain from, uh, from a prostate tumor going away completely within three days. Do you have comments on the value of a full water fast treatment for cancer symptoms? Um, uh, well, like I think we just addressed this question this last week too, that um, there's plenty of evidence that doing the fast over 24 hours increases in uh, um, uh, IGF-1 levels, which is a growth hormone factor, which that's why you know most people don't recommend doing more than a 24-hour fast for cancer patients because it will increase IGF-1 levels. But I have had patients that have done a 10-day fast, a seven-day fast, a 21-day fast, and even a 40-day fast, and it, and it really helped them. The only thing you have to really be careful of is the second half of this question. I am a thinner person, 6'1", 150 pounds. That's pretty tiny. Um, and if you're doing a 21-day fast, you are definitely gonna lose weight. I mean, definitely gonna lose weight. And the, one of the worst things for a cancer patient is to fall into the trap of cachexia, meaning that, oh my gosh, I'm down to 135 pounds and now I can't even put on weight. That, that, is, that can be a really a bad thing for a cancer patient. That could be a tumble that you can't get out of. So if, you're, if, if, if you were thinking of trying a, a longer fast, whether it be three days, 
five days, seven days, 10 days, or even something like this, I would say, don't try it unless you have some weight to lose. So, oh boy, I could lose 20 pounds and I would still be, you know, not be too thin. Well, then, then that can be something that you can pray about and try. Not against trying things that maybe go against some of the research out there. Hey, the research isn't perfect either. If you feel like God's leading you to something, try it. But you also got to be wise. And if you're at, you know, a weight like this, I don't know that that's a wise thing to do. Um, I wouldn't, that wouldn't be my first go-to. Yikes, I've just heard about people using their own aged urine to get lots of stem cells into their bodies, both by drinking and animals. Have you ever heard this? Yes, I have. Um, but understand, you don't want extra you know, stem cells and you don't want stem cell um, stimulators in your body if you have cancer uh, because stem cells are premature cells that can differentiate into um, something that you don't want it to differentiate into. If you have cancer, it could differentiate into a cancerous cell. So um, you want to try drinking your own urine. That's up to you. But um, it, um, uh, I would do some more research on that. Have you ever heard about AHCC? Yes, that's a component in uh, different mushrooms. And I write about that in my mushroom book. So download the mushroom book and you can read about that in there. When I read the Rife manual, it says download and install the latest frequency update. So if you just got um, a Rife from us, if that has already been done, how often should you um, download and install the latest frequency updates? I'd say about every three to six months, you have to put your take your computer off of airplane mode. Remember, we tell you to leave your computer on airplane mode and do not run Windows updates. Do not run any Windows updates. Do not run any computer updates. The only updates you want to do is Rife updates. And you do that in the Rife program itself. So um, there's uh, videos in the Rife section and in the Rife frequency course of how to do that. So make sure you don't run updates for your computer. You'll just bog down your computer and get a whole bunch of ad garbage that we have deleted off your computer. So don't do that. Uh, do you recommend that I turn my machine on at 9 p.m. so that I can turn it off after the program finishes before I go to work? Um, no, no, I wouldn't say that. Just you can let it time out. Let's say you get up to leave. You can just flip the 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 program off. So you don't have to do anything with the computer. I mean, slip the your Rife machine itself off when you're going to get up and leave. Just reach over and click the off button on your Rife machine. Where can I purchase the muriatic acid to clean my ion pro wave? Any hardware store would have muriatic acid. What is the terminal matrix heater uh, and tube and would I need it for any treatment of my breast cancer? No, the terminal matrix heater is the heater for your, for the ion pro wave water. You don't, that's not anything you need. Uh, it says no kale or very little. This person is talking about their genetic review information. Um, and re reason why you don't want a lot of kale with cancer patients has to do with your, well, probably has to do with your NOS genes, but it also has to do with um, uh, kale has the highest amount of nitric oxide as you know, any vegetable. I mean, by far, spinach is number two, but kale has probably three to four times the nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is great if you don't have cancer. But if you have cancer, nitric oxide increases what's called endothelial growth factor. Endothelial growth factor um, increases your, um, your ability to grow new vessels, what's called VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor, increases the ability to grow new vessels into a cancer, which will then feed the cancer and allow the cancer to grow more readily. 
So you don't want to be taking nitric oxide supplements. You don't want to be taking a lot of kale. You can have some kale in your salad, but don't be making kale smoothies or anything like that. Collard greens is fine. You're fine taking that. Clear Dim, I'm very sensitive to ashwagandha and ginseng. Can I take the Clear Dim Pro or the Clear Dim Advantage? Uh, yes, or maybe just take the, the easier Aroma Clear. That would probably be your best product. It's just a cleaner product, doesn't have the other things in it. ADK or ADK Avail look both look identical because they are. They're the same product. So we have we have a private labeled um, ADK Avail, which is uh, Designs for Health product as ADK Complete. We could use the same name. All um, the same product has 5,000 IUs of vitamin D. Um, but your, uh, your vitamin D, this person say, but my, my vitamin D is already at 150. Well, I really need you to get the vitamin A out of there. So I'll email you a different product for vitamin A. Um, it was because of a gene that you have, a gene defect, you really need some vi more vitamin A. Um, so um, just hold off on that and I will get you, I will email you a different product to take to get that vitamin A. Class two and all the supplements previous and always feel ramped up. Um, amped up. What would that be from the TV go? No. Would that be from the quercetin? Yes. It's probably from the quercetin. It would not be from the betagene. Betagene would actually would probably help calm you. Quercetin is going to help decrease inflammation in your brain quite readily. TV go will too, but it'll be a slower process. Um, and it could, you can feel amped up after that. So that's not uncommon. I've decided to get the hormone blocker treatment that my oncologist suggested in order to try and aggressively shrink my ER positive breast tumors. In my mind, while the estrogen is blocked, I want to double down on my program to kill the cancer off. My goal is to have no cancer left to cut out. I don't know if this is realistic, but I like to try and at least and at the very least, have a, a less involved surgery. I think you, you just got to keep a very positive mindset. I think that's a great goal to have. I'm supposed to start two injections in a pill on Friday. At what point in my treatment should I send a cheek swab to get the next phase going strong? I'd wait till, you know, after you take this for, after you're on the injection, probably three days after this, so maybe next week. So Friday, this week you're doing this, maybe next Tuesday, send it another cheek swallow. Are there supplements that I should have on hand to combat the most common side effects of induced menopause? Well, again, you know, like we said, the side effects of this induced menopause are from a decrease in your estrogen levels. And you, we could give you a whole bunch of different things that would, that would negate that. But they'd be all estrogen based. They'd be things that, oh, if you have, you know, that that a that a person going through natural menopause could take. They're typically soy, um, isoflavonoids from soy. You can't take those. You really can't do those. So, um, uh, the body aches and pains. Certainly, anti-inflammatories can help that, like curcumin and uh, boswellia and you know, those kind of things can help that. The vaginal dryness, you're just going to have to use some creams. Um, you can't use any progesterone products. You can't use anything that's going to be an estrogen st stimulator. Fatigue, I would just say adaptogens. Um, hot flashes, maybe maca root in some of the adaptogens would help with that. And brain fog, definitely the anti-inflammatories, the same thing you'd be taking for the aches and body pains the flavonoids, the curcumin, the resveratrol, the boswellia, the white willow bark, the quercetin. Those are the things that would be good for that. Decided to go with seven weeks of radiation five days a week. 
and low-dose chemo cisplatin once a week. They told me HPV-related squamous cell responds well to this treatment plan. My genetic test came back with a P16 marker. I will also have a feeding tube, and they, they are requesting Kate Farms formula. So Kate Farms formula for feeding tubes is way better than anything else out there on the market. So that's good. My question is, what kind of supplements should I make sure to have on hand to combat the short-term side effects of mouth ulcers, dry mouth, and skin irritation? Um, uh, boy, the one thing that I would take is that product that I talked to about before. I think it's called Clear Selenium. Uh, plus iodine. I think that's what it's called. You call Megan in the office. That's our private label of preferred premier, or excuse me, professional health products, product of, of selenium with iodine. So that would be the one that I would take. That will help protect your thyroid. That could help protect some uh, issues with the radiation. Uh, the dry mouth, I'd be swishing with um, coconut oil and skin irritation. They do have a cream that they will give you. Some people have also used just coconut oil on that. Um, you could put a little bit of essential oil in that as well, like frankincense. Anything that can keep my throat from swelling. Anytime you think of swelling and pain, you go back to those flavonoids that we've talked about so often. EGCG, curcumin, boswellia, resveratrol, uh, stingy nettle, uh, white willow bark. Those are the things. Uh, it's in a lot of those are in our product called Clear Inflam, um, uh, or the AI product has that in there. Um, those things are there too. But Clear Inflam is probably a little bit cleaner specifically for this. I'm also concerned about long-term effects, difficulty swallowing, and taste changes. Taste changes are going to be hard to get around because there's damage with radiation to your taste buds. Um, the difficulty swallowing it would just be going back to those flavonoids and hitting them hard. One thing you might want to think of too, if you have trouble swallowing pills, is the liposomal curcumin can be really helpful. Um, that could be helpful. Does the parotid gland supplement help with that? The parotid gland supplement will help just protect the parotid gland and help with um, production of saliva. So that's what that will help with, which was going to help many of those things, especially the dry mouth. I'm considering taking the Oxy Flush Colon Cleanser, which is supposed to have oxygen based cleanse on it. Here's some ingredients. Okay, so I could go on to a half hour story about this, but um, I'll abbreviate it. There is a NASA scientist who invented the magnesium oxygen combination to give off oxygen in the intestinal tract. Um, he was paid by um, a group uh, uh, of uh, a supplement company to produce this as a supplement, right? Um, and this company gave him a percentage of money down. I'm simplifying the story as much as I can here. And they were gonna pay him the rest after they got the complete formulation. Well, he left out a piece of the formulation because this supplement company kind of um, cheated him. So all the magnesium oxygen products on the market actually don't work like this, the research shows it will work. I don't mean to be a stickler, but these the but they are stealing the research that he used from NASA and claiming that that is valid in their product. But actually, there's something that he left out of the product, so it doesn't actually work. Um, well, this scientist was actually then developed a relationship with the with the owner of the parent company of U.S. Enzymes. The parent company of the U.S. Enzymes um, who makes a lot of enzymes for a lot of the, the supplement companies out there developed a relationship with this guy. And the guy who owns the parent company of U.S. Enzymes 
I know him. He's he's one of those overachievers. He's climbed every of the highest mountains. There's a term for somebody who's climbed all the peaks, mountains. He's this overachiever, single guy at 40 something. And he's made himself a, become a probably a billionaire, but he just is a super anal, um, you know, person who wants to do everything right and isn't really concerned about money. Well, he developed a relationship with this NASA scientist who developed this oxygenation of magnesium that could help help kill stuff in your gut. Well, in that relationship, this guy, the guy who's the owner of the US Enzyme, his first name is Troy, um, said, I'll produce, I'll help, I'll create the machine that can do this for you. And we'll go haps on it. I, I don't need the money. Well, <laughs> US Enzymes produced the product. I actually went and visited that um, uh, the uh, US Enzymes parent company and uh, Troy gave me and Dustin and about six other doctors a tour while they were finishing this machine. And we got to actually see the machine. Well, the product that they have produced and it, they just don't even market it is, so long story short, don't take that product, take this one. It's called Cleanse uh, Design. So, so it goes like this. I think it's X Y M. That's how you spell it. Cleanzyme um, by uh, U.S. Enzyme. So we have it in our store. Um, this is the product you should take. It's far superior product. It was. It's actually made by the the NASA Harvard scientist who developed the technology and got all the patents and. And um, and uh, and then all the other companies are not using the right formulation, and it really it's not an expensive product, and it's uh, it's that is how you get oxygen to the the um, the, the uh, oxygen based tissue to the colon, oxygen based magnesium to the colon. Uh, so use that product by U.S. Enzyme. Anybody can take it. It's you no, know, this doesn't hurt anybody. It's not necessarily necessary for any everybody, but anybody can take that. Okay, to the questions here. I was unable to start my supplements from you until a week and a half ago, um, but was doing a lot of my own supplements. Um, from the RGCC protocol. About three month cheek swab is due with you now. Should I still do it or wait until I've gotten uh, been on your supplements? Yeah, I'd wait until you've been on the supplements for a little bit longer. Are you familiar with liquid hope? Uh, yes, what is your thoughts if I'm not eating enough? So yes, you could do it. Um, that's that's fine. I'd have to look at, you know, the last time I looked at the ingredients, it was a couple of years ago. So I'll have to Google and look up the ingredients on it. If I don't think it is right, I'll, I'll email you. I'll have to look at that. The one with the peptides has got more proteins in it. And um, I, I'll have to look at the ingredients on that. I ordered clear digest and protein zyme from you and wondering if this will help my system as I am having terrible bloating and gas with skate parts. Yes, I would try the the digest the digest, the clear digest. That's what I recommended when Megan asked me about what would be the best thing for you. And remember, with your digestive enzymes, you want to titrate them if you're having issues like bloating and stuff. And titrating means I'm gonna take one with a meal. Well, that didn't really help. I'm still getting bloating. And that's to, tomorrow I'm going to take two with a meal. And you could go about three or four days of trying to titrate up slowly and type and titrate down. And you get to a point where you might have to take like six or seven per meal until finally, wow, this is really helping. Then you start to titrate down. You don't have to be on that kind of dose forever by any stretch of the imagination, but you might have to titrate up to really get your body working and then you titrate back down again. Okay. Is Expeller uh, expressed canola oil an acceptable oil? 
no. No canola oil is an acceptable oil in my book. Any, uh, you could use expeller expressed sunflower oil or safflower oil, um, or, uh, but I would not use canola oil. Are you familiar with stout bars? And if so, do you think they're okay? Organic dates, yes, I think they are okay. I've had them, they're very good. I'm back from the Immunotherapy Institute in Tijuana, the Mexico surgeon found an olive-sized lymph node on my right armpit. The known cancer is on the left side, going to have a PET scan and probably a double mastectomy. Ugh. I don't know what else to do. That's okay, it's all right. Also, considering low-dose chemo in Mexico post-op, if they say I need it. Mexico does not think I need radiation. Uh, they will provide post-op treatment suggestions after the tumor has been analyzed after surgery. I don't have enough fat for uh, flap reconstruction. Uh, what do you think about all of this? Suggestions for pre and post-surgery. I can send a cheek swab test. That would be the best thing. Um, so I can review that. You know, again, I'm not against doing the surgery. It's that might be the best thing to, you know, you got an active cancer that keeps popping up different ways. Debulking can be the best thing to do sometimes. So don't feel bad that you failed because your desire was not to have surgery. God sometimes has different plans. And we just kind of go with the flow sometimes and see the direction God's making us. Two months after the gut detox, which helped me a lot, I started Herxine and still continues. Although doing coffee enemas and sauna, I need something to detox for whatever causes this. Is there a supplement to help besides charcoal? So you have to really define what Herxine is. So you might not be Herxine having true Herxheimer reaction. You might actually be having some food sensitivity reaction to something you're eating. So just because you're having symptoms of a Herx reaction, it could actually be an immune stimulation to an auto, with an autoimmune thing. So getting some other testing might be valuable. So if you have a local practitioner that will do a Cyrex test, either a Cyrex 10, which will test for food sensitivities or a Cyrex 7 uh, and 5 and 7X, which will test for antibodies. So understand, just because you have cancer doesn't mean you don't have other things going on. You could have an autoimmune issue and you're doing immune stimulation to kill your cancer. Well, immune stimulation can kind of spark an autoimmune reaction, um, which then you got to weigh out, you know, I'm trying to kill my cancer. Do, well, I'm going to have to deal with this autoimmune issue and kind of put that on the back burner. But if you're in remission, then it's might be good. This is why we talked about pulsing your supplements, going a week off your supplements and seeing if it decreases that, that reaction, because that could be an, an autoimmune reaction, meaning your immune system is being stimulated and you will kill that which you have antibodies against first, which if you have self-antibodies, it's going to affect your thyroid if you have Hashimoto's or something else. So I do some further investigation. I'm not a big fan of using symptoms to just say this is a Herx reaction because so often it could be something else. Outside of the metastasis question, would blood tests be recommended? Absolutely. So doing blood tests to, so what kind of blood tests should be done on a regular basis? A CBC, which will measure your red blood cell count, um, make sure you don't have um, any type of anemia going on will be really good. Um, a complete metabolic panel. So a complete metabolic panel would measure like your liver function tests, make sure that everything's working well there. Um, uh, that Those are your two most common things to do uh, as far as blood tests go. And then if you wanna get um, into do, looking at tumor markers, you are, that's, those are more specific tests. Um, but your CBC and complete metabolic panel, that'd be the standard thing you'd get done is if you went and got a, you know, your, your annual checkup, they would do that, very minimal. Um, if you 
tumor markers would only be for someone who has a history of cancer. Do Google, or not Google, sorry, do search on that little search bar for tumor markers, and you'll see my blog post about tumor marker tests to get specific on what tumor markers might be appropriate for you to run depending on your cancer. And then there's other things that you might run. So other blood tests, like if you're, you might want to get a complete thyroid panel, um, uh, you might want to get a complete lipid panel. So if you're concerned about, uh, you know, your cholesterol balance and triglycerides and things like that, those are the other things that you can do. I have been tasting a lot of metal lately after I do dry brushing, castor oil packs, infrared sauna, and rebounding. Uh, do I take a break or just keep doing those things? I just keep doing those things. Feel bad when I'm detoxing, don't have a lot of energy, and have my eyes twitch. I make sure you're getting enough minerals. You know, if you're getting eye twitching, you're doing saunas and such, make sure you're getting enough minerals. If you're using chelators like zeolite and everything, you could be chelating some of your minerals out. So make sure you're taking some minerals and getting some minerals. Hearing the liquid hope is much better than Cape Farms. Um, it doesn't have as much sugar as like Cape Farms, so maybe true. Tony started radiation on Monday, and when I was first chemo, uh, I'd be on Friday. At what point you send in a cheek swab? I think that I answer that you want to give it about three days, four days after you start that protocol. How about PEOs? PEOs for dryness, that is parent, I said parent oils. So parent oils for dryness. I would, when I'm on hormone blockers, I, I would use coconut oil. Like I said, you could use expeller pressed safflower and sunflower oil. Um, but I'd use coconut oil and olive oil, your two best oils. Uh, with the heavy metal phase zero assist metal X synergy product, is it best to use cell core binder uh, heavy metal ET to flush these out? Oh, uh, yes, you could, or you could use our clear binder. Uh, cell core binder is their binders are good. They're um uh I, I like our clear binder. It's a little less expensive. Cell core products are a little pricey. Um, and so our clear binder, it's also called, it's called phase five assist, I think, is a really good all around binder. I have a less licensed dietitian and uh, she asked me if I could get a copy of the cheek swab results. So the cheek swab results are just what I give you. So I don't have a printed result sheet for you. It's just the changes that I give you. So the testing is done with kinesiology and prayer. And so I don't have a printed result type thing. You're welcome. Do you happen to have favorite natural sleep remedy? I have found one by Eden Sleep but it has a THP component that I just have never heard of. Um, my favorite natural sleep remedy to try is the Insomnitol. Um, Insomnitol is a product from, uh, from uh, um, Designs for Health. Those are just a herbal formula. If um, there are some homeopathic formulas out there, um, that can be beneficial too, but insomnitol is my favorite one. It has uh, melatonin and some different herbs to sort of calming brain, calming herbs. CBD can be beneficial for that, for sleep too. So if you have a CBD at home, taking that an hour before bed, that can be beneficial as well. Okay, a lot of good questions tonight. Um, just remember to keep sending your questions in on the on the um, on the forms um, and on the member site. Keep checking the member site and keep looking 
at the member site and using the blog. You could either go right to the blog there and search the blog, or you could just search here. It'll search the blog and the site. So um, make sure you take advantage of that. Also take advantage of all the other courses that um, um, you can jump on and learn a bunch of stuff. The seven phases of detox is probably your most appropriate one. All right, now well, I'll be praying for all of you. You guys are in my prayers on a daily basis. I love you all. And uh, I'll get this recording up and we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye-bye.